about 20 devotees. I think nahi ho raha hai papa custom live with a uh, little something's off with it i'll try yeah. otherwise i'll just record it okay next so, time uh, recording shall i do it yeah started recording i started yeah oh, okay started already so what should it says this meeting is being recorded by continuing to be in the meeting you are con consenting you have to give permission yeah. Yeah. yeah so shall we then call everyone in Get yes everyone in. Okay, because we should start on time. Hare Krishna, everyone. So, we are going to have yet another session with His Holiness Atmanivedan Maharaj, sponsored by the School of Vedic Studies. And I'm your host, Rasa Krida Parayana Das, assisted by my wife, Apurva Shakti Devi Dasi, as well as your course coordinator, Brinda, our daughter. So uh, before we begin, today's course is a four-session course on 26 qualities of a Vaishnava. This course is very unique, actually, because on this subject, while there are mentions about these qualities in Bhagavatam as well as the Chaitanya Charitamrit, but there was a book written by His Holiness Satsurup Das Goswami, Srila Prabhupada's disciple and a guru in our movement. But that was many years back. So, so this is really a very um, important subject. Uh, in the um, for someone who is in the journey of Krishna consciousness. And there is a wonderful verse in the third canto of Srimad Bhagavatam, 25th chapter, the glories of devotional service, text 21. Titik shavaha karunikaha surhida sarvadehi nam ajat shatravaha shantaha Sadhava, Sadhu, Bhushanaha. The, transla the translation reads, the symptoms of a sadhu are that he is tolerant, merciful, and friendly to all living entities. He has no enemies. He is peaceful. He abides by the scriptures and all his characteristics are sublime. Sadhu, Bhushana. The abhushan, the jewelry of a sadhu is that a sadhu is adorned with sublime characteristics and qualities. And that will be the subject matter that His Holiness Atmanivedan Swami Maharaj is going to take us through in the next four weeks, including today in four sessions. A few housekeeping. One is... As Maharaj said, the process of bhakti begins with shravanam. So attentive hearing to these sessions is important. At the end of four sessions, we will have five or six questions sent to all of you in your links. And there will also be PowerPoint presentations. As you all know, Maharaj always makes wonderful PowerPoints which will be sent across to all of you. So that will be your reference point. Besides that, you can hear these sessions again on our YouTube channel, School of the Vedic Studies. And at the end of that, you have to turn them the answer sheets into us. We will, in conjunction with Maharaj, you know, mark them, go through them, and then there will be um, a certification 
uh, process at the end of this these four session course uh, in a very similar fashion though a little different because in the 12 mahajans we had questions for every mahajan but here there would be a comprehensive question for the entire subject matter five or six of them so that will be the the way we are going to approach this course so thank you again for um, you know being associated with us your participation is our encouragement to serve you more and more and also we are very grateful from the bottom of our hearts uh, for his holiness atmanivedan swami maharaj who so much painstaking painstakingly as well as lovingly he puts in his efforts and hours into preparing these courses for us so let's make the best use of these wonderful opportunities by which we can all hope to progress in our devotional life so maharaj thank you again without much ado mic is over to you Hare Krishna. So, as uh, Rasakrita Prabhu mentioned, we are going through the 26 qualities of a devotee or a Vaishnav. So, we'll begin in a few seconds before I st st start. Say a few prayers. Om Jnana Timandandasya Jnana Anjana Salakaya Chakshu Zumitam Yena Tazmai Sri Guru Venamaha Vanchakalpatrubhyascha kripa sindhu vyacha patitanam pavanebhyo vaishnabhyo namo namaha Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadhar Sri Vasadi Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama Rama Rama, Rama Hare 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 Krishna So Part one, we are going to discuss about uh, the 26 qualities as, as the slide says here. And none better than Srila Prabhupada is a perfect example of one who possesses all these 26 qualities. So here we will see that as Srila Prabhupada mentions that the process of Krishna consciousness is so sublime that it revives all these wonderful qualities which we have, but unfortunately they have been contaminated by association with material energy. The introduction, uh, in this introduction, while teaching Sanatana Goswami, Lord Chaitanya described the 26 qualities of the Vaishnava. So Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu himself, when he was imparting this transcendental knowledge to his uh, followers, namely the six Goswamis, and one of them was Sanatana Goswami, who, who got a, a lot of understanding from Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu on the basis of devotional service. So the, these qualities were discussed by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu with Sanatana Goswami. So in the Madhya Lila chapter 22, verse 70 to 80, these uh, verses are uh, described in, in each individual way. So I have broken them down with numbers, so it's easy for us to understand. The first one is Kripalu. Second is Akrita Doroha, Satyasara, Sama, Nidosha, Vandanya, Mridhu, Suchi, Akinchana, Sarvopraka, Sarvo, Sarva, Sarvopo, Karaka, Shanta, Krishnaika, Saranam, Akama, Ahina, Stira, Vijita, Sadaguna, Vita Bhuk, Apramata, Manadena, Amanina, Tambira, Karuna, Maitra, Kavi, Daksha, Mauni. These are the 26 qualities. Of course, they are all in uh, Sanskrit. Now, if some of you are, you are Sanskrit scholars, then you'll understand. If you're like me, then we have to go to the next stage of understanding what is the translation of these words. So, Kripalu means merciful. Krita Droha, not defiant. Satyasara, thoroughly true. Sama, equal, Nidosha, faultless, Vandanya, magnanimous, 
मृदु माइल सूचि क्लीन किंचन विदाउट मटीरियल पोजेशन सर्व उपाकरा का वर्किंग फॉर दी वेलफेयर ऑफ एवरी वन शांत पीसफुल कृष्ण एक शरण एक्सक्लूसिवली सरेंडर टू कृष्ण अकाम डिजायरलेस अहीन इन डिफरेंट टू मटीरियल एक्विजेशन स्टेरा फिक्स विजेता सत guna completely controlling the six bad qualities namely lust anger greed arrogance delusion and jealousy mita bhukha eating only as much as required pramata without inhibition manada respectful amanina without false prestige gumbhira grave karuna compassionate maitra a friend kavi a poet daksha expert and mauni silent so now we understand what these sanskrit words means in the six 26 qualities so there is a little repetition because i am citing this from the chaitanya charitamrita and also from the shrimad bhagavatam so here is saying devotees are always merciful humble truthful equal to all faultless magnanimous mild and clean they are without material possessions and they perform welfare work for everyone they are peaceful surrendered to krishna and desireless they are indifferent to material acquisitions and are fixed in devotional service this is the translation given to these verses by prabhupada in the chaitanya charitamrita they are completely controlled in six bad qualities lust anger greed arrogance delusion and jealousy they eat only as much as required and they are not inebriated drunken or intoxicated they are respectful grave compassionate and without false prestige they are friendly poetic expert and silent So it is not, however, that a devotee must work separately to achieve each of these qualities, as explained by Sukadev Goswami in the Simad Bhagavatam. So these twenty-six qualities are there, in, as is mentioned in the Chaitanya Charitamrita, also in the Bhagavatam. But here, it is mentioned by Prabhupada that a devotee must not endeavor separately to get all these qualities. As Sukadev Goswami is explained, so we go with a little bit deeper into the understanding of what Sukadev Goswami is saying. This is the Simad Bhagavatam, sixth canto, chapter one, text fifteen. Kashit kavalya bhaktiya vasudeva parayana gama dhunavanti pratas yana niharam eva bhaskara. Only a rare person who has adopted complete unalloyed devotional service to Sri Krishna can uproot the weeds of sinful actions. with no possibility that they will revive he can do this simply by discharging devotional service just as the sun can immediately dissipate the fog by its rays so again here sukadev goswami is saying very clearly that one who is unalloyedly fixed in devotional service to sri krishna can uproot all the weeds of sinful actions with no possibility that they will be revived so this is a very important point that by following these principles of devotional service will uproot all the bad qualities and there is no chance they will come back again so uh, the example given is as the sun will immediately dissipate the fog by its rays so we can uh, see from this slide which i have selected is a very nice slide in early morning there's a lot of mist around and as the sun is coming up on the horizon the mist is automatically cleared by the presence of the sun and everything becomes crystal clear so all these wonderful qualities which are already there deep down in our heart will manifest again by the power of devotional service just by executing pure devotional service a devotee attains all good qualities in the bhagavad gita chapter 8 chapter 13 uh, text 8 to 12 lord krishna mentions 20 items of knowledge in the parparshila prabhupada explains unalloyed devotional service is the most important item if one takes to devotional service in full krishna consciousness the other 19 items automatically develop within him so these 19 items are mentioned here including devotional service humility pridelessness non violence tolerance simplicity approaching a bona fide spiritual master cleanliness steadiness self control renunciation of the objects of sense gratification absence of false ego the perception of evil of of birth and death old age and disease detachment free from entanglement with children wife home and the rest 
even mindedness amid pleasant and unpleasant events constant and unalloyed devotion to to me aspiring to live in a solitary place detachment from general masses of, pe of people accepting the importance of self realization and philosophical search for the absolute truth all this i declare to be knowledge and besides this whatever there may be is ignorance so here krishna is very clearly saying all this what is mentioned by krishna in these two verses is absolute necessity for transcending this material world and everything else besides this krishna is very categorically saying is ignorance so we have to be very mindful that we we follow all these principles of devotional life and therefore not be in, uh, in, uh, influenced by the mode of ignorance so again in uh, simad bhagavatam chapter 4 text 20 uh, chapter 20 uh, verse 16 varham chamata kanchana manavendra vishnu vishnuvate ham gunashila yantritya naham makayarvyai subha sulabhas tapo bhir yogena vayat samachita vartri so here as sukra goswami is explaining my dear king i am very captivated by your elevated qualities and excellent behavior and thus i am very favorably inclined towards you you may therefore ask from me any benediction you like one who the one who does not possess elevated qualities and behavior cannot achieve cannot possibly achieve my favor simply by performance of sacrifice severe austerities or mystic yoga so we have to understand that in this present day and age lot of people are performing many sacrifices yagyas austerities performing mystic yogas these are not the things which is going to be attracting krishna what will attract to krishna is our elevated qualities and excellent behavior so krishna says very good thus i am very favorably inclined towards you therefore you may ask from me any benediction you like but i am i but i always remain equipoise in the heart of one who is equipoise in all circumstances so lord vishnu was very pleased with maharaj prithu so when lord vishnu approaches uh, to uh, in in the yagya shala of maharaj prithu the previous verse is saying that he is so impressed by his elevated qualities so he is asking to ask for any benediction you like so here lord vishnu is very pleased with maharaj prithu's good character and behavior and offer him a benediction the lord openly says that performing great sacrifices or undergoing the austerities of mystic yoga practice cannot satisfy him he is pleased only by elevated character and behavior but this cannot be developed this but this cannot develop unless one becomes a pure devotee of the lord this is the underlying factor that unless until we become pure devotee of the lord these good characters and our elevation from the lower modes to higher mode will not take place unless and until we take full shelter of krishna so anyone who has developed unalloyed unflinching devotional service unto the lord develops his original good qualities as spirit as spirit soul the spirit soul is part and parcel of the supreme personality of god it has all the good qualities of the lord when the spirit soul is contaminated by the material modes of nature one is considered good or bad with reference to the material qualities but when one is transcendental to all material qualities all good qualities come out so again here proper is emphasizing very clearly that the spirit soul in its pure state devil has all these wonderful qualities because it is part and parcel of the supreme and therefore since we are part and parcel of the supreme therefore we have the same quality proper gives the example that the ocean of uh, water in the ocean and a drop from the ocean are same qualitatively only difference is that the drop is a very minute quantity compared to the vast body of the of the ocean so similarly we are part and parcel of the supreme lord and therefore we have the same quality as a supreme unfortunately because of our our small infinitesimal uh, position we become very easily influenced by the material modes and therefore we begin to act on a material platform these qualities of a devotee 26 in number are listed as follows one kind to everyone two does not quarrel with anyone 
3 fixed in absolute truth, 4 equal to everyone, 5 faultless, 6 charitable, 7 mild, 8 clean, 9 simple, 10 benevolent, 11 peaceful, 12 completely attached to Krishna, 13 has no material hankering, 14 meek, 15 study, steady, 16 self-control, 17 does not eat more than required, 18 sane, 19 respectful, 20 humble, 21 grave, 22 compassionate, 23 friendly, 24 poetic, 25 expert, and 26 silent. So this is the qualities mentioned in the Srimad Bhagavatam. The previous one, uh, which I mentioned, was mentioned in Chaitanya Charitamrit. So these are the two most important books which we are uh, privy to have by the mercy of Srila Prabhupada. which is giving us very detailed explanations of how to perform pure devotional service. The Lord is satisfied by development of transcendental qualities of the living entity and not by artificial performance of sacrifice of mystic yoga. In other words, unless one is fully qualified to become a pure devotee of the Lord, one cannot expect to be liberated from material entanglement. Now, I will show you a short video. It is about a couple of minutes. This video is very interesting. You will try to wonder what is this to do with 26 qualities, but in time, all will. So this was a little uh, fast, uh, you can say it, uh, time scale to show the caterpillar from the day it is born from an egg into caterpillar and it's, it's and it's and it's finally becomes uh, it's enough. Then it goes into uh, a chrysalid and then the transformation. So basically this whole concept what I'm presenting here is that we are like the same as caterpillar. That when we take birth in this material world, and we do many activities. But if you perform the right activities, then as Prabhupada explains, that the power of devotional service is so strong that there is a metamorphosis which takes place, that we become from a conditioned soul to an unconditional soul. 
and the unconditional soul is very beautiful because it is unconditional in, in terms of that it is not affected by the three modes of material nature and then it becomes a, like a beautiful butterfly so these wonderful qualities also develops in us as uh, mentioned here in uh, uh, in this short presentation of the metamorphosis of a, of a butterfly so we are in the same position that we take a transformation from a very crude uh, with bad qualities and as we start performing devotional service rendering service to krishna chanting the holy names associating with devotees then all the weeds or all the anarthas all the coverings are taken away and then the beautiful soul really manifest with all these wonderful qualities so here in this slide we see sila prabhu sitting in the background under the famous tree in tonkin square park and surrounded by a lot of uh, people or uh, like hippies and prabhupad said i have changed them from hippies to happies so he 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 and when the, the, the persons who came to shelter shila prabhupad and started following the principles of bhakti then there was a transformation and all of these wonderful devotees were dressed beautifully and prabhupad said when devotees are shaven headed wearing beautiful dhoti kurta they look like people from vaikuntha so there's a transformation as we can see and this is a practical thing that how prabhupad by simply introducing the krishna consciousness principles of devotional service transform hippies into devotees so this is another interesting slide this is what the hippies were doing in 60s traveling in the bus and painting with very colorful buses and going around hoping that they would be free from the social norms of society but prabhupad changed them and then brought them to this level that the hari krishna movement was started and they all became wonderful devotees and they started performing sankirtan and so just going here there uh, and everywhere with uh, no aim in life basically so this is uh, another very nice short presentation of a video of uh, one one minute i think taking the bus and you know, chanting the holy name and spreading the holy name everywhere So Prahlad Maharaj describes devotional service as ninefold process, beginning with chanting, hearing, and remembering the Lord. If we perform devotional service, we will automatically develop all the transcendental qualities. Srimad Bhagavatam states, therefore, if the devotee develops all the good qualities of the demigods, control of the senses, which are very difficult even for the yogis, comes very easily to the devotee because he engages his senses in the service of krishna monastic liberation seems hellish an elevation to the heavenly planets seems like phantasmagoria to the devotee only devotional service is per perfect and complete then what is the point of lord chaitanya is describing the devotee's 26 qualities one reason is to show us the richness of the vaishnava's character it is glorification to the vaishnava another reason is that we can see whether we are developing these qualities regarding the bhagavad gita's 20 items of knowledge shila prabhupa writes as for actual advancement in spiritual science one should have a test to see how far he is progressing he can judge by these items the krishna consciousness movement is meant to sweep all over the world 
And the 26 qualities therefore must ultimately become the standard for all humanity. These qualities begin with mercifulness, must be understood in the transcendental sense, not as they would appear to an ordinary person. So Prabhupada is saving the whole world and he's spreading this Krishna consciousness. When, when you, we say, what did Prabhupada really mean? It means that he wants to make this planet full of devotees. And Prabhupada was one time asked that if Swamiji, if everybody becomes devotees, what will happen to this planet? Prabhupada said, simply we will become a Vaikuntha planet. So now we'll go into the discussion of the qualities of devotees in, in, in details. So the first one is a devotee is merciful, Kripalu. Lord Kapila in his teachings to his mother Devahuti discussed mercifulness as one of the symptoms of sadhu. Srimad Bhagavatam 3, Kento 3, uh, chapter 25, text 21, in the purport, Prabhupada says, he, the Vaishnava, is merciful because he is a well-wisher of all living entities. He is not only a well-wisher of human society, but a well-wisher of the animal society as well. If it is said here, Sarva Dehinam, which indicates all living entities who have accepted material bodies. Not only does a human being have a material body, but other living beings such as cats and dogs also have material bodies. The devotee of the law is merciful to everyone, the cats, the dogs, trees, etc. He treats all living entities in such a way that they can ultimately get salvation from this material entanglement. So this is a very important point Prabhupada is making here, is that a devotee is considered of all living entities, not just a selective few. And here he is giving categorizing, cats, dogs, trees, etc. that should be treating all this in such a way that they would get salvation from material entanglement. He's compassionate because he has enlisted in the cause of compassion, but mercifulness is best expressed not in tending simply to the bodily needs of others, but in giving back, giving back them their eternal relationship with Krishna. In fact, to give a person anything other than Krishna, consciousness is violence. So again here, Prabhupada is emphasizing very much that we may tend to so much bodily needs, you know, in times of some uh, injury, warfare, and so forth. But if you give anything other than Krishna consciousness, then it is a violence towards that living entity. So this slide is depicting a soldier very badly injured, and his colleagues are helping him out and, you know, giving him uh, medical attention. So this compassion is okay. But unless until you free him from the concept of material body, he's going to take a body again. And when he takes another body, then he's going to through the whole cycle again and again and again. So therefore, Prabhupada said, it is a violence. So we have to give them uh, a chance to take shelter of Krishna in a devotional spirit so that they're freed from this repeated birth and death. The principle of Bhagavad Dharma are merciful. And anyone who follows them automatically gives up all kinds all kinds of unkindness and as a result in karma if we follow the Vedic codes of religion then by obedience alone we will act on the platform of mercifulness to all living entities we are we will not kill the innocent animal and we will give the human being Krishna consciousness so again Prabhupada is saying that if we develop a little bit of that compassionate heart in our, uh, our, our nature then we will be kind to all living entities and we will not kill anyone unnecessarily. And to human beings, we'll be extra kind because they can actually perceive Krishna consciousness. Obviously, you can't give Krishna consciousness to animals because they cannot tell head or tails of it. But at least a human being is endowed with that intelligence. When he receives this transcendental message, he can actually understand. This is one of the qualities of a human being that we can do athato brahma jignasha, that we can inquire about the higher nature. So quality number two of a devotee is he is not defiant, Krita Droha. So Prabhupada also translates this not defiant as humble also in certain places. When Srila Prabhupada first met his spiritual master, Srila Bhakti Siddhartha Thakur, he was supported, he was, uh, he was a supporter of Mahatma Gandhi's effort to free India from the clutches of British rule. During that meeting, the two 
engage in discussions in which Srila Prabhupada expressed his viewpoint concerning this political matter. Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sarathakur responded by defeating Srila Prabhupada's notion using sound logic and scriptural evidence to prove that Krishna consciousness alone could rid India as well as the rest of the world from all the material sufferings. Of course, Prabhupada was concerned that if India at the time was under the British rule and they were dominated by the British Raj and British culture, then how we can spread Krishna consciousness? Of course, his spiritual master is saying that spreading Krishna consciousness is not dependent on all these things. We simply have to have desire to give Krishna. And if you have desire to give Krishna, then Krishna himself will manifest in us. By Krishna's mercy, we'll be able to give people Krishna consciousness and then ultimately free them from all material suffering. So Srila Prabhupada was not defiant. Being blessed by, with all humility and respect, he surrendered very graciously to his spiritual master's infallible conclusion and accepted him as a spiritual guide. From, the, from this transcendental inst instructive pastime, we are able to see how a pure devotee of Lord Krishna is non-defiant and how he must conduct, and how we must conduct ourselves in the presence of genuinely advanced Vaishnavas. So we can learn these examples from great acharyas, great spiritual teachers, as Bhagavad Gita said, says very clearly, yet yet astras is sisters, that whatever a great man does, the common man follows. So we are very fortunate that we have such great personalities to guide us. We simply have to follow in their instructions and perfection will automatically follow because simply by dedicating ourselves in the instructions given to us by a pure devotee, we can become pure devotee. Why? Because a pure devotee can make you a pure devotee. If you wish to rise to the platform of divine consciousness, although Srila Prabhupada is a personal associate of Lord Krishna, was capable of giving spiritual guidance to the entire world, he was always surrendered to the lotus feet of his spiritual master and never exhibited even a drop of defiance in his character. So we can read this in Prabhupada Lilamrita that how Prabhupada was so much always emphasizing the importance that he is simply repeating what he has heard from his spiritual master. He is only instructing the instructions which he received from his spiritual master and therefore Simply by following the paramparic line, he is being, he's been awarded with success to give others Krishna consciousness in their paramparic line. In the Sri Chaitanya Charitamri, Srila Prabhupada translates Krita Droha is humble. So again, it is not just that Krita uh, Droha means not defiant, but is humble also. In the Sarang, uh, Saragati, Prayers of Bhakti Thakur evokes the attitude of humility in a way that is very helpful to devotees. Although Srila Bhakti Thakur is an empowered, liberated acharya, he describes himself as one of the fallen conditioned souls. And thus, he is lamenting having wasted his life without Krishna consciousness. So Bhakti Vinod Thakur is again a great person of, of humility, uh, embodiment of humility, and how he's teaching us through his own example that even though you may be very great, but ultimately in front of Krishna and other great Vaishnavas, you are simply a known entity. And therefore, it is very important that we adopt the humble attitude and respect. And therefore, by humility, we can capture the hearts of the Vaishnavas and the heart of Krishna. And once the heart of Krishna is captured, then of course, uh, we are completely under his shelter, as Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita in the 18th chapter, Aham tam sarva papevyo. He frees us from all dangers. But we have to come to that point to win his heart. So he says that he is coming to, he says that he is coming to Krishna consciousness at the end of his life, not because of his own virtuous decision, but because material life has ruined him and he has now no alternative. He is truly humiliated forced by the chistness of, uh, of, of time and faith to be humble. So again, Dr. Thakur is saying that he did not just come to Krishna consciousness willingly, but circumstances prevailed such that he was humiliated by all material environment he was in. And this brought him down to his knees. And then therefore he said, in a humble way, I will take to Krishna consciousness. 
So of, of course, Bhaktivinoda Thakur actually is a greatly advanced Vaishnava, but he is putting himself in this position to teach us, the conditioned souls, what we are. So he is actually giving us a reflection of ourselves in himself, less like a mirror reflects our image as perfectly as we can see in the mirror that is exactly identical to who you are when you see the mirror. So similarly, Bhaktivinoda Thakur is showing us our ourselves as a reflection in him. So therefore, it is not that we consider Bhaktivinoda Thakur was a fallen person, but he is showing us that actually we are very fallen and learn from him how to become free from these uh, misconceptions and illusions of that I am something very special. Seeing gloomy death approaching, finding himself unable to enjoy pleasures, he humbly hearkens to the, to the message of Lord Vitanya. Sila Bhaktivinoda Thakur also expresses sadness that he did not surrender to Sri Krishna long before. And this sadness is also a devotional sentiment. It is far superior to the blind enjoyer who goes along merrily in ignorance. A humble devotee, as expressed by Bhakti, Sila Bhaktivinoda Thakur, captures the dictionary meaning of humble, awareness of one's shortcomings. Having reached, the, having reached the point of hopelessness, he thinks he cannot be saved. And yet, going beyond hopelessness, he receives the message. See Krishna, he receives the message. See Krishna's pure devotee compassionately delivers to him. There is hope. See Krishna has saved so many fallen souls and he can save another. Saranagati therefore teaches us that humility is not a superficial thing. It is a deep, honest, and natural. And it comes when a conditioned soul sees his failure and unpretentiously begs Sri Krishna for forgiveness and engagement in devotional service. These are such wonderful sentiments Bhaktivinoda Thakur is giving us that we have to be not pretentiously or, or, or making a show of it, but genuinely beg to Sri Krishna for forgiveness and engagement in devotional service. When we beg to Krishna for forgiveness for all our misdeeds we have done, Krishna is such a compassionate personality that he will forgive us and engage us in devotional service. And we are on our, on our way in our journey back home, back to Godhead. In the Bhagavad Gita, as it is, Srila Prabhupada writes, humility means that one should not be anxious to have the satisfaction of being honored by others. And Lord Chaitanya in the Siksha system gives the ultimate expression of humility. So we are very much familiar with these words. Trinadapi Sunishena, Taroroiva Sunishena, Amanina Mani Dena, Kirtanya Sadahari. One should chant the holy name of the Lord in a humble state of mind, thinking oneself lower than the straw in the street. One should be more tolerant than the tree, devoid of all sense of false prestige and ready to offer all respect unto others. In such a state of mind, one can chant the holy name of the Lord constantly. So Mahaprabhu himself is also giving us a, a very deep uh, definition of what is humility. And in that state of humility, we can actually feel ourselves even lower than the straw in the street. And why is this compared to the straw in the street? That even the straw sometimes has a little bit of arrogance. If you want to experiment, experiment this, take a straw in the, in the grass and put your finger on the straw. As you, as you press the, the straw down into the ground, part of the straw will stick up. So this is the arrogance of the straw. So we're saying we should be even more tolerant and humble to, uh, than that. And if you are following this, then we can very pleasantly chant the holy name of the Lord without any difficulty. And not only that, but we will develop taste for chanting, an attraction for chanting, because this is the condition required in order to uh, develop that transcendental taste for the holy name. Humility is glorious and, and is one of the prime qualities of transcendentally situated person. Srila Prabhupada says, the quality of humbleness and meekness leads very quickly to spiritual realization. Out of humility, the sannyasi goes from door to door, not exactly to beg, but to awaken the householders to Krishna consciousness. Meeting many difficulties in his traveling and preaching, the sannyasi remains tolerant and humble and therefore gains the strength to go on preaching. Again, here Prabhupada is saying very, very nicely that the sannyasi doesn't mean that he is out there and he goes visiting 
different countries for sightseeing. But actually, in the modern day, when the sannyas is traveling from country to country, city to city, village to village, home to home, his business is only to go and awaken the people who are sleeping in the slumber of Maya, now awaken them to Krishna consciousness. And this is what Chaitanya Mahaprabhu says, Yare deko tare ko Krishna upades. Wherever you go, who will you meet? Simply preach to them about Krishna. Speak to them about Krishna. And of course, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is not saying that you have to be a sannyasi. Any person in any state, whether you are a Brahmana, whether you are Satriya, whether you are Vaisha, whether you are Sudra, whether you are Brahmachari, whether you are a Griyasta or Varnapasta or Sanyasi, regardless of any condition you are in, you can still speak to anyone who, whom you meet about Krishna. And that is the highest perfection of understanding Krishna. No one is fit to approach Krishna's lotus feet unless he is humble. Humility before Sri Krishna is natural, of course, because he is a supreme. Similarly, humility before the Vaishnava is also natural because he is a servant of the greatest. And Krishna Das Kavira said, I am so sinful that if you simply remember my name, you will lose all your credit of your pious activities. He actually meant this. But of course, Krishna Das Kavira is not an ordinary personality. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu uh, accorded him the title Namacharya. So Krishna as Kaviraj is, uh, sorry, not Namacharya, but he was uh, blessed by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu that he was the author of Sri Chaitanya Charitamrit. He actually was empowered to write the traditional pastimes of the Supreme Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Now you cannot write something about Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu unless until you are blessed by the Supreme Lord and he empowers you to do so. Of course, Krishna Kaviraj was such a great personality that he wrote the transcendental pastimes of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu by the blessings of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. But he considers himself so fallen that even someone says his name would be considered condemnable. But of course, when you say Krishna Das or just Krishna, it is transcendental holy name of the Lord. Such humility, however, is not so cheap that one can obtain it simply by writing humbly yours before signing one's name. It cannot be imitated. It must develop gradually. If one sincerely desires to be a devotee and faces facts honestly, then he must drop all arrogance and pride. Of course, we uh, many times when we write some offerings uh, on especially Vyasa Puja to our respective spiritual masters, and we write your humble servant or your unfaithful dog, such and such such person, but when we write your humble servant or your unfaithful dog, do we really mean that we are unfaithful dog? Really not, but it is just a figure of speech. But here it is said by Prabhupada that one must really feel that humility, not just writing. And therefore we should be free from all arrogance and pride. Following in the path of previous acharyas, he will, he will not he will note that Lord Chaitanya showed humility by accepting himself as a fool before his spiritual master, Ishwara Puri. An honest devotee will conclude, what am I compared to Lord Chaitanya? My place is humble. I have very, I, I, I have very stupidly entered the cycle of birth and death. So what do I have to do to be proud of? So of course here, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in his own personal pastimes, when he approaches his spiritual master Ishwara Puri, he very humbly submits to him. And of course, Ishwara Puri, not an ordinary person, a great devotee of the Lord, immediately recognized that this is not an ordinary person. He is a Supreme Lord himself. And how he is submitting to me? Actually, I am not worthy of being submitted to, but I should submit to Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. But again, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, by his own example, is teaching us the actual essence of humility. And when we actually understand this humility, then we are on our way in our spiritual life. Otherwise, we'll be proud of everything. And when we are proud, then naturally arrogance follows and arrogance follows, then, then all that remains is we fall into the pool of material existence. His divine grace, Srila Prabhupada displayed the epitome of humility in coming to America. He had no prestige. He describes himself as an insignificant beggar undergoing constant difficulties of an old age, living in a foreign land and a dangerous Kali Yuga city, 
the heart of the of the degradation of non vaishnava acharyas had ever seen chila prabhupada was constantly humble now, of course prabhupada is saying he is insignificant beggar and uh, sometimes also he said i was just loitering in in streets of new york like a, like a beggar you know but prabhupada is not loitering he was simply seeking out those fallen souls who are deserving to get krishna consciousness and he was giving them krishna consciousness but prabhupada did this in, in complete humility depending on fully uh, the mercy of his guru and krishna he he preached to whom who whomever he listen, would listen and he tolerated insults robbery the madness of lsd intoxicated hippies ignorance of the people the constant proximity of meat eaters and sex mongers and he and his own property or his own poverty and obscurity without becoming angry or discouraged gradually shila prabhupad succeeded in gaining disciples and instill in them faith in krishna consciousness so i would request all of you who are listening to this presentation please read shila prabhupad's lilamrita the lilamrita especially the first well second volume planting the seed is such a wonderful uh, narration of shila prabhupad's hard work and tolerance and austerities he performed simply because his heart is so magnanimous that his only desire was to give krishna to everyone and therefore prabhupad is is the greatest personality who came to this world he is second to krishna who gave krishna consciousness and freed us all from our darkness years later when krishna consciousness movement was thriving all over the world shila prabhupad never took any credit for what he had done he said he had done nothing at all except to faithfully carry out the orders of his spiritual master he was therefore humble in taking the orders of his spiritual master on his head humble in coming to america humble in enduring difficulties and humble in his fabulous success let us pray to be humble devotee and take and taking the orders of sri guru and krishna on our heads carry out these instructions Whomever, whom, whom, whomever you meet, tell them about Krishna. This is the order of Sri Jetan Mahaprabhu. So we will conclude this session here, and in part two we will continue from the qualities uh, of uh, qualities number three to ten. So Hari Krishna, everyone. Thank you very much for your kind attention. I hope that this will help you in your spiritual progress. and we'll all make our advancement in our journey back to god hari krishna hari krishna maharaj thank you so very much so we we have uh gone through two qualities today and maharaj is going to take us through eight qualities in the next three weeks in every week so that would then complete the 26 qualities um maharaj has also asked us to read the prabhupad lilamrita many of us have read and we uh, and the others who haven't you can uh, either get a copy from a nearest iskon temple or center near your uh, place of residence or you could even access it online from vedabase.io vedabase.io so do you know there's a whole library of prabhupad's books and in that there is prabhupad leela mitra also available actually it is very uh, yes what are we as devotees we should all read it if you have read it we should read it again and, and again because reading prabhupad's past times is as good as krishna's past times because it will enliven us because prabhupad is a real person we know krishna is a real person but we don't know him until he reveals himself to us absolutely wonderful maharaj for sure we will uh, certainly you know do that and probably have some reading sessions on prabhupad lila mita also as part of the school of vedic studies so thank you everyone for your attendance and uh, we really look forward to your staying connected with us and uh, uh, you see the, these this these programs and these sessions are not only a one way street where you know our esteemed teachers like his holiness atmanevedan swami maharaj 
they come and give us the class, but it's all about connecting with our teachers. So um, you'll all be pleased to know that on the 31st of July, after we have finished all the four sessions of this course, we will have on 31st of July, Saturday, a question answer session with Maharaj. So in that, there won't be any presentation. You can all, we really request all of you to note down, we will send you a reminder also. 31st of July, same timing, one hour Q&A with His Holiness, uh, Atma Nivedan Maharaj. So what you have to do is, any question that you may have, anything, uh, you can ask Maharaj on one-to-one -one basis. So let's do that on the 31st of July. Besides these sessions with His Holiness Atma Nivedan Swami Maharaj, I also wish to inform you that we also have a few other sessions going on. On Fridays and Sundays, we are holding Bhagavad Gita Prava. In the mornings, Oman time 8 to 9, 9.30 to 10.30 India time uh, with His Grace Kamal Ochan Prabhu. It's a 20-session course. And uh, we were also doing the structural overview of Srimad Bhagavatam, but that uh, right now uh, we are not getting the dates with His Holiness Bhakti Vigyan Maharaj, but as soon as we get, we will let you know. That's on Saturday mornings. And tomorrow, uh, from Sunday to Thursday, in the evenings for half an hour, 8 to 8.30 uh, Oman time, uh, 9.30 to 10 India time, little late, but still manageable. We are going to have sessions with His Holiness Bhakti Jeevan Maharaj. We have sent you the, uh, the details on the Chatur Shloki Bhagavad Gita, the four key verses of the Bhagavad Gita, which is also the essence of Bhagavad Gita. And on a daily basis, every morning from 6 to 6.30 in the morning, which is 7.30 to 8 India time, we also have the readings of Srimad, Srimad Bhagavatam. We have completed first canto reading. We will be beginning the second canto from tomorrow. That's every morning. Uh, those sessions are called Nityam Bhagavat Sevaya, Let the Nectar Flow. We invite all of you to join us for that also. See your convenience and do join us. And from Sunday to Thursday, we have every evening from 8 to 8.30, the Bhagavad Gita uh, reading sessions. And as Maharaj has inspired us, we will very soon introduce Srila Prabhupada Lilamrita reading sessions also. So uh, these are a few uh, of our, you know, just to let you all know that what's going on with our School of Vedic Studies. We thank you again and we thank His Holiness Atma Nivedan Swami Maharaj uh, for this another wonderful session, Maharaj. You really, the caterpillar to butterfly was absolutely a beautiful uh, example because Prabhupada mentioned this in one of the purports and I think you have picked it up and depicted it in an absolutely wonderful way. Thank you so much Maharaj. It was a very very beautiful example and also the, the, the way you presented the hippies to happies transformation was another very beautiful practical we can feel it that when we take up to Krishna consciousness how the transformation takes place and the qualities get invested. Thank you very much, Maharaj. Is there any question or comment, you know, before we, we've got, we can have another five minutes. Please raise your hand and more than welcome to take your questions or comments or reflections. Um, Haribo. Okay, so... If there aren't any questions, then we can have a quick few minutes of, as I call the chit chat with Maharaj. You know, so now the rules of the game are that you have to switch on your video to be able to meet Maharaj personally. So whosoever switches on, all right, wonderful. We've got lots of videos open now, so I'm gonna begin. Murli Dhar Prabhu and Anusuya Mataji from Kuwait. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj. You have Maharaj. Wonderful class, Guru Maharaj. Especially metamorphosis of uh, 
uh, caterpillar <laughs> wonderful Are it is it was a good, good uh, analogy because we are all changing for, from a from a caterpillar into a first class butterfly. That means yes. <laughs> yes, but still we are in caterpillar stage, Dubli Garbaraj. No problem. You saw the caterpillar was eating, eating, eating. So that is preparing itself. So what we do in our eating is not eating prasadam, but we eat the knowledge. The more and more knowledge we eat, then we will make a transformation into a beautiful Vaishnava. and we have Anupama Radharani Mataji from Dubai. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my respectful obeisances until your lotus feet. Krishna. Thank you so much. It was a lovely class. In this point that you mentioned, not defined, a Krishna's plan. And he had firm faith in Krishna. Uh, so is it possible, like, you know, instead of the 26 qualities, if we have maybe 20%, 50% of some of the qualities, can we qualify to go back? Yes, if we sincerely take shelter of Guru and Goranga, then everything is possible. But see, it's not that we have maybe 10% quality, 20%. We all have all the 26 qualities in us, but each and every quality we have a dis different percentages because it is covered by many other uh, anarthas. So by the very process of devotional service, it gets rid of, gets, uh, get rid of all these anarthas. And then the, those natural qualities which are already there will, will come out. And the example I gave was of the sun. When the sun comes out on the morning uh, horizon and all the mist is dissipated by the brightness of the sun. So similarly, the devotional service is that powerful. When we simply take to this service, then it will dissipate all the anarthas in the heart, and the glorious soul will will uh, will display all the twenty six qualities. It is it is possible for us all to get it. It is not impossible. Simply we have to pray, and praying is is the most important aspect. As as I mentioned in one of the slides, that we have to beg like mad to Krishna, help me here, Krishna. And if we keep begging, then Krishna says, "Okay, I'm tired of your begging. Okay, I give it to you." Then Krishna will come to our aid. Thank you so much, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. So we have Vijay Prabhu and Atra Mataji. Please accept our respectful number of senses to your lotus feet. Hare Krishna. And it's really a wonderful session, Maharaj. We are blessed to have you all the time. And we look forward always the weekends when we would like to see you and get this knowledge, Maharaj. Feeling is very mutual. I am also very happy to see all the wonderful faces. Thank you, Maharaj. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, Maharaj. Thank Thank you. Thank you. We have Rajnath Gopal Prabhu. Hare Krishna, Dhanavad Pranam, Maharaj Ji, Dhanavad Prabhu. Uh, Maharaj, as usual, is one of the most wonderful class again. Uh, only the thing that uh, these all the qualities, you say that is all covered, which is there. But I don't know uh, when I feel these uh, qualities are there, uh, and we can make use of this uh, in the in the uh, uh, service of the Lord. Well, it, it will come. It will come. You see, it is not an overnight process because Prabhupada explains for many millions of lifetimes, we are yeah. around in circles and accumulating all these garbage on on, on us and attachment, especially. When we get a human birth, we become even more attached to things. Animals they only get attached to eating, sleeping, mating, and defending, and nothing beyond that. But we get attached to every single thing. Even emotions we get attached to. So uh, the power of devotional service is so wonderful. And this is why Prabhupada says, 
that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is Namo Mahavedanyaya. He comes magnanimously and freely gives qualified or not qualified. He's distributing. Now the question is who is going to accept it? Because he's giving to everyone. It's just like, you know, you walk in, in a busy street with a bundle of, uh, say, $100 bills and just throw them in the sky and then they will float down. Yeah. What? And ignore it. That's fine. And those who are saying, oh, it's $100, I'll take it, I'll take it. Then they will benefit the $100 or they may even get more than $100. So similarly, Lord Chaitanya is just freely giving the love of Godhead. But unfortunately, we have uh, only uh, material appreciation of $100, but not of the spiritual nature. And therefore, great Vaishnavas like Prabhupada, who comes by his personal effulgence, he removes the darkness, and then he shows us, hey, this is a real valuable thing. $100 will be there today, gone tomorrow. Spiritual knowledge you get today will remain and will increase more and more. And appreciation. So, uh, Prabhupada has given us everything. Only thing is now we have to be eager to take it. The more you take it, the more you get. And spiritual knowledge is such that it keeps increasing many fold. Real things remain to exactly where they are or they decrease. And the only way to increase that is to get more material things to increase. But spiritual life, if you already have it, it will be growing in your heart. Like the initial creeper. For so, me, Maharaj, every Saturday is like a charging my full battery. Your association, Maharaj, is really wonderful. The, I don't know about my association, but I think it is a collective association of all the Vaishnavas. Sir charges the atmosphere to such an extent because everyone is with a good heart. And when there are so many good hearts put in one place, although it not physically, but on, on a transcendental uh, internet waves, it does create a very wonderful atmosphere, and we all benefit from it. So, very blissful. Very blissful. Take advantage of this, and we'll all be very happy. Thank you. My pranam to your lotus feet. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Vrindavan Sham Prabhu. You have to unmute Prabhu. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Maharaj. Please accept my respectful messages. Uh, class was wonderful, Maharaj. And uh, it's amazing. I'll wait for the further class. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Thank you. We have Tritraj Prabhu and Mataji. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Guru Maharaj. Tandavat Pranam. Hare Krishna. So happy. Our Guru Maharaj uh, gave. Lectures every Saturday is a very uh, like Kulab Jamu. I like Kulab Jamu. So, so very, 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 thank you very much, Guru Maharaj. Thank you, every, you, I Kulab think Jamu, I'm very happy. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, uh, for, for example, of humble, uh, I, I came, uh, uh, read, uh, read, I read the Prabhupada book, the Juhu, how he humbly wait. Think that buy the land, Bombay for the Bombay land for the temple. It's a very difficult go and here and so, but he won and with the humble, and the and the lady also became a devotee and so it's a very nice Guru Maharaj always on the lotus feet of you because we are very happy our Guru Maharaj giving a lesson and more devotees. Uh, this pandemic time, we both uh, always inside the, <laughs> uh, our residence, we are unable to go. My children, they never allow us to go out. This is a very, I think uh, uh, we are traveling towards the goal of the, with the Guru Maharaj guidance. Krishna is, uh, Hare Krishna. I don't Krishna know. is giving us good opportunity to read and, and, and chant and listen more and more. Yes, every words, I, I note it. Every words uh, attack uh, mind and heart and get through the desires, everything, material engagement, everything. No words, Guru Maharaj. All Hare, thanks Hare, Hare. for this uh, very 
uh, school uh, giving more and more with our Guru Maharaj. So thank you very much for all our devotees and very, very Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Mataji. And we have a young Yatharth with us. Maharaj, he's been attending regularly the Gopal Fun School and also our regular classes. Yathar, do you want to say something to Maharaj? And seek the blessings? Yathar, we can't hear you. Say something. Um, Hare Krishna, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Hmm. I really like the classes and, and I'm happy for this course. And I really like the example of a caterpillar to a butterfly. Very nice. So now you turn into a beautiful butterfly. <laughs> Not literally, but become a wonderful Vaishnava. And show everyone. Yes, Maharaj. Show, ex show your example to all your friends, like Pallad Maharaj, how to become a wonderful devotee. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Hare. Thank you, Yathat. So nice to see you. And we have Srinivas Prabhu. Srinivas Prabhu. Hare Krishna Prabhu. Then all pranams to uh, Maharaj. Uh, please accept our humble obeisances, Prabhu. Maharaj. Uh, Maharaj, I have a quick question, actually. I put it on the chat also, but let me read that uh, for your convenience. Uh, Maharaj, actually, it's really very blissful to know this 26, 26 wonderful qualities a Vaishnava should imbibe and have. Uh, uh, but at the same time, we have to live and earn the livelihood from this material world with people around us are so hard struck with the material qualities. And in order to deal with them and the situations of the economic life, we are forced to behave the materialistic way. Kindly explain how to deal with the situation and the balance of the two worlds. Two worlds. We don't have to behave like them, you know. If, if they are materialistic, they are covered, then we should so look, see them with compassion that they are so unfortunate. They're covered by these materialistic att attraction, attachments, and you know, desire for enjoyment, you know, separate from Krishna. But we don't have to be like that. So we take example of, for example, say Prabhupada's father, Gaur Mohan Dey. He was a businessman, and his dealings were such wonderful with his customers that even the shop next to him is selling the same material. They would not go to buy material from there. They would come from Gaur Mohan Day, even if the shop is closed, they would wait until he opens the shop. So, he, because he's attracting people by his good quality. So, we as devotees, we have to show compassion, kindness, and tolerance to everyone. Otherwise, what will happen is that like the waves in the ocean, they come in and then they go out. And if we are behaving like them in the, in the same materialistic and hard-hearted, then we will also be dragged into that ocean wave and once you are dragged into the depths of the ocean, we get lost. So we have to uh, show ourselves a little better than them, but not to tell them that, look, I'm better than you, but by our own example, by our own interaction. Mm -hmm. And, you know, as I said, in, in, in uh, dealing with uh, non-devotees, one of the most important aspects is tolerance. We have to tolerate these things. And if you are tolerant, then automatically the person who is uh, misbehaving or, or is very materialist will see something different in you. Mm -hmm. And not only that, but he'll see why you're always happy. You know, you are struggling the same material pandemic situation as I am, but you seem to be always happy. It's okay, I will tell you the secret. Sit down, my friend. See, this is Krishna and pray to Krishna. Then he will, he will kind of uh, understand and also opportunity for you to show how you are happy because you are with Krishna. So this, this is a wonderful uh, opportunity to preach also. But if you become like them, then we are no better than them. Then mm -hmm. it doesn't solve anything. But we have to show ourselves different. And of course, all the devotees, even they are going through some, some very difficult situation right now due to pandemic, you know, health-wise, economic-wise, and many other difficulties are there. But they still remain very sober and they, they, are, they are happy. And they, they take advantage of whatever situation there is to, to, to make advancement spiritually. And then, of course, Krishna is always there. And Krishna is there, then you will definitely be free. As Prabhupada says, that there's a big bunny tree. And on a scorching uh, summer's day, if you go underneath the tree, then the soothing shadow will cool you. 
So similarly, when we take shelter of Krishna, then the soothing rays of lotus feet of Krishna will cool us from the, the material uh, sufferings, you know, and we will feel much more comfortable. It's, it's natural. So that is why we take shelter of Krishna and his devotees. We'll be happy people. Thank you, Maharaj. That was really wonderful. Yeah. Uh, only thing is, uh, uh, I asked the same question to some of the other uh, uh, devotees and uh, some swamis. And um, uh, I mean, I'll, I also see some difference between uh, some devotees to the other. I see that, you know, you have, you have to live with two worlds. One is a spiritual transcendental world that we are all going through. And the other one is the practical world. You, you have to live with that way. And, you know, you cannot avoid uh, not being greedy, not being jealous and, 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 and being materialistic to earn money for the company and all those, uh, you know, uh, I mean, illogical ways of earning money. See, so what it is, if, you are, if you are employed by a company, you do your sincere job for the company. Now, if the company is going to make money, it's going to make the money. And if company's karma is bad to lose money, no matter how hard you work, it will lose money. But they cannot blame you for it. Yeah, because the, mm -hmm. your, your boss will see that you are putting your sincere effort to, mm -hmm. to, to do your duty as, as, as an employee. On the other hand, uh, I give this example, we have to be like a duck. When a duck goes into the water, it doesn't get wet. So we are in this material world, but we are not of the material world. So we, we, we should not get affected by the material world. Therefore, we keep a shield around us of Krishna consciousness. And this Krishna consciousness shield will protect you from the influence of material energy. And that is where, uh, that is how we can stay safe in this material world, although we are in the material world. And of course, if you are employed by a company, then you have to do your honestly your best for the company, the job you are employed for. The rest, of course, is their karma. And even your, if you, your, your own karma that, you know, if you're gonna get a pay rise, you'll get a pay rise. If you are working hard, twice as hard, and you think you'll get a pay rise, you still won't get one, because it is not destined to you. So we just accept what Krishna gives us. And right. we, without that, we'll, you know, with expectation, we'll be always disappointed. But if there's no expectation, then whatever comes your way, you'll be grateful. Oh, I wasn't expecting, but thank you very much. You know, so you always be happy. That's a, that's a secret to be happy. We do everything without expectation. Krishna says, Ma fale Don't expect anything. True. Krishna says, I am going to give you, don't worry, you know, I am your best well wisher. I'm not going to make you suffer. Because if Krishna makes us suffer, then he's not God. But he is he's, he's the shelter of everyone. And therefore, we take his shelter, and he will do the best for us. Absolutely, Maharaj. Thank you very much. That, that completely Hare answers the question. Hare very, Hare well, very well. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you. Thank you, Prabhu. Uh, I think we have Kuldeepika Mataji. I can see your video on. There's Kuldeepika Mataji. You want to say something? You're, you have to unmute, Mataji. Mataji, you're muted. Yeah, now you're okay. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna, you know, Hare Krishna. enlightening hearing every Saturday. We wait to hear from you. And for this uh, present situation, these are the tonics for us, you know, hearing from uh, like you, great, great, you know, uh, Acharyas, like you know, Gurus, you know. It's very nice. Otherwise, uh, I don't know what, what what will be our situation. Really, uh, Krishna is so merciful that you know he has been you know giving us chance to hear from, from you. Like you know, uh, it's very nice, Maharaj. Thank you so much. Hare Krishna. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Mataji. And uh, Srinivas Prabhu, Maharaj, you give a wonderful answer, and it you know I happen to hear. Uh, like, you know, in Vani Media, uh, Srinivas Prabhu, the, if you go to YouTube, there's Vani Media. And if you write Prabhupada Lectures, anyway, it opens Vani Media with 361 short lectures that have taken, you know, six to nine, eight minutes. So I generally hear from there. And today I heard, it's called Simply Hanker After Spiritual Things. Yeah, the number is 0196. And what Maharaj was explaining uh, to your question, which is common to each, all of us, you hear that 
then you will see a, an amalgamation of what Maharaj was saying. And that will further kind of embolden your understanding of what you're trying to ask. So it'll be wonderful. 0196. And everyone else can also hear. So, so we're coming to an end to this session, this wonderful session, Maharaj. A lot of devotees on the chat also send their appreciation for today's uh, session. So, but you know, we are all limited by time. So we will end this session here. And we look forward to having all of you again next Saturday at the same time. And for our other programs, you can get in touch with Vrinda, our coordinator. You're all in, you know, through email or WhatsApp, and we can give you the information of other satsangs that we hold. Hare Krishna, His Holiness, Atma Nivedan Swami Maharaj, AC Bhakti Vedan Swami Thank you, everyone. Stay safe, stay healthy, and wish you all a very good night and a restful sleep. Hare Krishna. 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 Hare Krishna